Dates, Dates, and Mates with your host, Damona Hoffman. Hey, lovers, welcome to Dates and Mates. This is the place where we are going to demystify modern love, and I have a super spicy show lined up for you today. We are broadcasting live here from Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood, and I am bringing you not one... But two super special guests, I'll be talking to an executive from The Match Group who will be giving us the juicy on their brand new dating app slash game that they're launching called Crown, just launched in LA, and I'll be talking to him about the ins and outs of that new app in just a minute. Plus, I have Leah Rose Emery, who is one of the top writers for Bustle. You know that online mag, you love it, and she is one of the top writers on sex and dating and relationships, and she'll be talking talking with us a little bit later in the show and helping me answer your questions. We have questions like how to handle it when your parents are giving your boyfriend money huh? and tips for getting busy at work. <laughs> there will not be a demo of that today. OK, so if you're watching on the live stream on my Facebook page at Demona Hoffman, don't worry. Um, it's it's we'll safe. Keep it family it, we'll keep it family friendly. No, actually, this is going to be a pretty juicy show. So uh, you've been warned. We're, we're going to make it spicy today. And we're going to talk about the headlines, including the differences between how men and women fall in love and another dating trend. Another dating trend and, uh, and a little bit of lingo that I get to share with you today. Plus, we'll discuss how men can appear more attractive to women, according to science. And producer Thomas is in the house with me. I'm doing this show today with glasses. I don't yes. usually do the show today because I'm having LASIK right after this. Like literally right tour. after this. <laughs> so this is like the last show I'll ever do with uh, glasses. Wow. Bittersweet or last are you looks. happy to... Uh Happy to have I'm them a, off. I'm a little scared. Really? I don't know. It's going to be a brave new world. I know. <laughs> I know. So next, so the next show, we're going to take a, take a little hiatus in June, mm -hmm. in July. Sorry. But uh, the next time you see me, I will, I will be Do able to Do you think you'll you ever back? wear like glasses again for fashion, or are you ready to uh, remove them from your from your I look? I don't know. The world is open <laughs> to us. The world so is your oyster. Let's get into what's happening in the world of dating in today's dish. D's dating dish. Well, I did say Leia Rose Embry, Emery is going to be with us later today, but uh, this article came to us from Bustle as well, so it's kind of a Bustle-tastic episode. Yeah. <laughs> so this, uh, this new article that just hit, it looked at the differences at how men and women fall in love, of course, according to science, and this recent study proved that men are typically the ones that fall in love first. I know you might you might think that the ladies are always trying to get that ring, trying to get that commitment, producer Thomas. Mm -hmm. But it turns out there's there's some things that that guys are 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 leading the charge on in the in the world of romance. They're typically also the ones to say I love you first. And that they're saying is scientifically driven because you see, men, biologically speaking, they don't have as much to lose. So women are a little more cautious. Mm -hmm. Because we're like, hold on a second, hold on a <laughs> yeah. second, because I'm going to be w the one. Let me check your references. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be the one left holding the bag yeah. or the baby. There you go. So I need to make sure that you're going to stick around. But then once you get into the relationship, it turns out women say I love you more often. Mm. I don't know. What's your experience with that? Uh, I think I technically said I love you first, but it was like kind of a mutual thing. Like it, I knew I was confident it would be reciprocated. Right. By the time I said it. Um, I And now you can't shut her up. Yeah, She's just no. like, I love you, I love <laughs> exactly. you, I love you. Just like a chick, I, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I guess she says I love you more, I think. It's pretty even, though. Yeah. Pretty even. That's yeah. good. As it should yeah, be. as it should be. In a good relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, when we're looking at the partnership, it turns out that men and women are both looking for the same things in long-term relationships kindness intelligence understanding and someone who loves them in return of course mm -hmm. so we might think that guys are looking for different things i don't know the ladies think that but it turns out like we're pretty much all the same yeah. when it comes down to it and the the one thing that is different in courtship though men are more likely to find that their love isn't reciprocated i think when you go back to the original men falling in love and saying I love you so mm. quickly they jump in with both feet yeah and then they may not get their love back in return because yeah. we're because we're busy discerning mm -hmm. making sure that you're worth it 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have found someone that you think is worth it, but you're trying to get their attention online, Elite Daily tells us about a new dating trend and term called Gatsbying. Okay, we're going a little bit yeah, we literary. Got a few, we got a few uh, terms to unpack here. Yeah, yeah, a little bit literary. <laughs> this was yeah, this was a multi tentacled article. Right, yeah. You start with Gatsbying, which for those of you who are not familiar with the great Gatsby, or maybe who who forgotten or fell asleep on the Leonardo DiCaprio right, movie. Yeah. It wasn't the best. I never saw it. Oh, okay. But <laughs> yeah. But I, I kind of I saw the trailer and I was like, yeah. I get it, uh, I get, get it. it. I read I've, the book. I've, I understand. But yeah. it's been a long time since yeah. high school English mm-hmm. for probably most of you. So let me just give you a refresh because in The Great Gatsby, you might remember that Gatsby was having all these elaborate parties to win over his longtime crush, Daisy. Mm-hmm. She she wanted to, him to notice. She he wanted her to notice him, and then she won. He wanted her to like him back. So you can have your own Gatsby moment, even if you are not able to throw lavish parties mm-hmm. now with social media. So the term Gatsby means you have a crush and you really want them to know how you feel, but you want to make sure that they also like you back. So you post this picture on social media to capture your crush's attention. And that's basically like the same thing as throwing a big party was in... The twenties, right? Yeah, more or less, I would say. Probably a little less expensive. Yes. Yeah. Less expensive. And as we're talking about less expensive and going a more uh the more base route of this mm-hmm. is the thirst trap, which yes. I also just discovered. Thank you very much, Elite Daily. The yes. thirst trap <laughs> is when you have a post kind of a sexy mm-hmm. post, right? And you're trying to attract everyone who's thirsty. Yes. Yeah. All right, Give them so a nice drink of water. If you want to know how to use this in context, <laughs> yes. there's a difference. Uh-huh. Gatsbying is intended for one special person, mm-hmm. and thirst trapping is just like for anyone. To see what flies stick, I think. <laughs> you, do you like how I turned it into a verb, too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm thirst, thirst trapping. trapping. Yeah, I guess that is a I'm thing. I'm creating a thirst trap yeah, that, by uh, thirst trapping that person. I think thirst trapping sounds cooler. All right. I hope you guys are using these terms yeah, yeah, because yeah. I we very painstakingly research them. Research them. We're on the cutting edge of the terms that people are using or mm-hmm. are about to start using. Gatsbying is is breaking news. Producer Thomas. Yes. Do you want to know how to be more attractive I to would, women? I'm sure everyone. Yes, I would <laughs> to love to. To one particular yes, woman? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know there's a lot of the guys listening that are like, how do I get the ladies? Mm-hmm. Well, according to science, because sciencealert.com put out this article, there are some things that you can do to get yourself higher marks when it comes to dating and relationships. So a couple of these are, are kind of no brainers, right? There's first present yourself as high status, like duh, like mm-hmm. Gatsby. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's pretty much what he was doing. But, you know, when we're looking at dating apps and and really dating in any sense, men who presented themselves as having status with like luxury cars or nicer apartments somehow got higher marks from women. I am always telling guys, don't post a picture of your car because I think that's just, I feel like that's just really, it's a cop out. It's like, uh, there's not enough substance to me, but hey, look yeah. at my car. You might be attracted to that. I think maybe in, like instead of like literal like uh, icons of status, maybe just carry yourself with a certain sense of dignity and respect is perhaps what That's what, what you say. could do. Yeah. But in the swipe apps, people are making decisions at the speed of light, mm-hmm. so you don't have much time to make that impression. So I guess your Bentley well, well, says that do for it you. Suffice in a pinch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. You want to also <laughs> passable. <laughs> you also want to look older. Uh-huh. Uh. Got women are attracted to older guys. So if you look a little bit older, a little more refined. Then that can get you some more likes online. Mm -hmm. Uh, Build a reasonable amount of muscle. I like this one. Heavily muscled men were considered best for hookups, but less heavily muscled men were better for long-term partners. So, right. 
keep that in mind yeah. when you're at the gym yeah. and you're like, should I do another set of reps? Well, well do I yeah. want a relationship? Oh, short term or a long term relationship? Right, right. Or do I want to hook up? And yeah. I've always said that women should wear red because men find it more attractive. Turns out guys also should wear mm. red. And again, when we're talking about swipe apps, you really want to capture someone's attention. That's why stop Put signs are red picture, because yeah. that signals to us that you need to stop and pay attention. But if you can make your partner laugh, if you can walk a dog, you play good music, men with with uh, good music taste, mm-hmm. and and p- who played more complex music, you know, scored as more attractive on my, the study. In my experience, that is not the case, but I'm glad that science proves that maybe the people are in the wrong. Because of your sophisticated music Yes, because music of my uh, avant-garde and uh, yes, patrician tastes, as I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, it didn't say avant-garde. It right, just said right. complex, complex. So yes, maybe that's yes, the distinction that's the there. Distinction. Yeah. Also, guys, practice mindfulness, meditation. Like That's very hot these days. Very mm. sexy in many ways. Um, you can play extreme sports, but carefully. Yeah, I like that. So, like, we like it when you take risks, but calculated risks. You want to wear a scented deodorant, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. I'm always saying don't go too heavy on the scents. Yeah, I think the days of, like, middle school locker room max body spray are over. Like, don't, you know, don't be able to smell you from a mile away. I think but, those days were over, yeah, like, like, before they yeah, started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's the really crazy one. Um, I... I, we're always talking about oh, how foodies <laughs> get more attention. Mm-hmm. And I just read an article today that Leia wrote about how Meghan Markle can no longer eat garlic. Apparently, mm. there's all these rules about what the royals can eat in public. Yeah. Um, so Meghan Markle can't eat garlic anymore, nor can Ugh. Prince Harry or any of the royal like a family. Boring, a boring culinary tradition. Well, they don't want to get poisoned. And I oh, I don't know. What? I guess garlic, you <laughs> can put the poison in there. Or maybe mm. the garlic itself is the poison because it smells so bad. Yeah. I'm not sure. But it turns out if you eat garlic, you could you could attract more women because men who ate food with garlic and then wore pads under their armpits for 12 hours and then the, allowed the women to smell the pads. This is a study. Please don't yeah. try this at home, <laughs> yeah. you guys. But if the women smelled the pads, the ones that had the garlic scent were more attractive. So you want to boost those pheromones, guys. By Get that garlic popping. Yeah. But not Prince Harry. No. Because he's all set. A couple last tips. You want to be sexy to the ladies, guys. Do some volunteer work. Show off your scars. This is good. It makes you more human. And there's always a story that you have. Mm -hmm. Um, Use open body language in your online dating photo. And look proud in your dating photos. There you go. So a surefire way to success. Yeah. So no more questions about how to attract a woman because I just literally gave you the entire rundown of how yes. to do it. We have so much more dates and mates coming your way. The match group executive I told you about, Andrew Lee Miller, is going to be talking about their brand new dating app, Crown. Plus, I have Leia Rose Emery from Bustle who will be talking to me about hookup culture coming right up. Okay, everybody. Every time I get a physical, my doctor says I'm low on vitamin D and B12. And I thought I was alone in this, but it turns out that 90% of people are falling short of FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. So my doctor says I need supplements, but you guys know me. I'm busy. I'm a working mom. And I would always forget until I discovered Care Of. Care Of is a monthly subscription vitamin service that sends you a box with all of your specific vitamins and supplements in individually wrapped packets. Here's mine with my name on it. Hi, Demona, it says. And you can just grab these and go. Care Of has just made it so easy to figure out what to put in your pack, too, because they have this fun online quiz. And in just a few minutes, you can figure out all of your vitamin recommendations and order your 30-day supply right to your door. Plus... It's about 20% less than getting similar brands at health food stores or pharmacies. And if you're like I was and you keep forgetting to take your vitamins, then make it easy on yourself and sign up at TakeCareOf.com. And to sweeten the deal, you'll get 25% off if you use my promo code DATESANDMATES. So take the quiz and find your perfect vitamin pack at TakeCareOf.com. And don't forget the promo code Dates and Mates. You can just click the link in the show notes right now and use that promo code to get started today. Don't go anywhere. There is still more excitement to come. 
So stick around, and I am now rolling right into my interview with Andrew Lee Miller of The Crown Dating App. I am so excited to bring my guest to you, Andrew Lee Miller. He is the head of marketing for Crown. Crown is a brand new dating app, and it's from the makers of Tinder and Match and Plenty of Fish, the Match Group. I know you've heard of it. You've probably used some of their sites. He spent over 12 years specializing in early stage marketing for for startups. And now he's applying all of his expertise, his experience working all over the world from San Francisco to Sydney, Prague, all over the world he's been. And now he's here on Dates and Mates to share his insights about this brand new exciting dating app crown. Please give big smooches to Andrew Lee Miller. Hello, Demona. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Hello. I had to give you your smooches right there because uh, I had a blast partying it up with you and the team from the Match Group and Crown last night. We did good. You did a big old launch party here in L.A. And this is the city where Crown is launching. Right. Tell me why you are launching this app and give me like a little bit of a sense of what makes Crown different from the other dating apps that are out mm -hmm. there. Well, L.A. specifically is where Grindr, Tinder, OkCupid, uh, and more apps have been launched. So this is the real test market. As you know, and many people know, dating is very difficult here. So if you can make it here as a dating app, then you can probably make it anywhere. But Crown is really unique for many reasons. But the main problem we're trying to solve is the cognitive overload from dating apps. So recent articles have shown that the average millennial is spending up to 10 hours a week in dating apps. And we think that uh, people are just too busy for that. And so we're trying to solve the problem with delivering you quality matches and less time with less effort. So so how do you do that? How is it different? Like Tinder, pretty much every dating app that's been out there from Tinder to Bumble, it's, it's swiping, right? Mm -hmm. So Crown is totally different. Crown is like a dating app slash game right. that makes it, brings back some of that fun of the gamification right. of Tinder when it first came right. out. Dating should be fun and, and online dating just exemplifies anything that you're doing in real life and makes it easier. And so, yeah, we, we come up, came up with our first ever dating game. And the reason uh, we focused on a game is we really want it to be fun. And the unique thing is it's limited time investment. So every day at noon, you get 16 pre-selected matches. And as you play, the matches get more and more accurate based on what you're doing. But you see two profiles at once, which is the first time that's ever been done. And the psychology behind that is when you're looking at one profile, we think that you might be setting the bar too high and accidentally subconsciously looking at or comparing it to your ideal mate. And so you're swiping left a lot more than you actually would if you knew you were just really opening up to communication. You're not comparing this person to your forever person, right? So Right, and you're not looking at like random things like, oh, no, he likes yeah, so, this band that I hate, and so, so swipe left. Exactly. <laughs> so by showing two profiles, we're actually comparing apples to apples, and you can actually decide really easily who you like more, and in a few minutes, go through a couple rounds, and when you get down to your final four, the app will literally message those people like, hey, you won Demona's crown for the day. Do you want to chat with her? And after you've done that, you really can't do anything else in the app throughout the day. So the idea is that, you know, hopefully those people say yes and you get to chat with them. So you get a couple meaningful connections a day with very little time investment. And what we're seeing already is that because of that limited amount of connections, that people on both sides are responding much more um, respectfully and, you know, seriously and actually engaged a lot more. Yeah. And are you uh, are you seeing that? the people are moving offline it's i know it's pretty new but that's another common criticism that i hear about dating apps like you stay in this chat phase forever mm -hmm. how is crown addressing that endless endless right. cycle of messaging that's not actually turning into romance and relationships yeah you know we have a lot of features coming out later on that might address something like that but i think the chatting length of time is really dependent on the people that you know so we definitely want the app to foster communication between two people that might actually like each other but yeah the goal is to go offline and actually meet and you know foster connections in real life and we're just trying to make that easy as, as easy as possible for people but if you go on an endless chat rant with somebody you should just uh tell them that you'd like to meet or not i think i know this is what i always say to people like the whole purpose of online dating or app dating is really to meet someone but i feel like the um the culture has shifted a little bit and people are doing it 
more for just the entertainment value. Right. So I think it's really interesting that the match group is coming at this from a gaming perspective, but with the purpose of co of right. creating real connections. Yeah, you can't endlessly swipe in the app. You can't waste an entire night when you're bored playing Crown, um, and that's really powerful. We want people to get their time back, but we also want people to meet people. You know, we want meaningful connections to happen. And like I said, online dating is supposed to just whatever your uh, personal motivations are, it's just supposed to make it easier. If you if you want to meet people, we want to make it easier for you. If you want to chat with as many people as possible and you know work on your opening lines, then that's what we want to help you do. But we don't want you to waste tons of time in the apps anymore. That's basically yeah. What we're there is. On. There's major dating app fatigue that it's right. happening. So I think if you can cut down on that that investment. I mean, I do tell my clients that you, you want to set aside some time, mm -hmm. but I like that Crown makes it so that you have almost appointment because it comes at the same time every day. every day. So it's like, oh, I can't, I'll meet everything. you for lunch after I check my Crown. Right. Right? Yeah, and, and people do take their time with it. That's why, you know, I say it takes five minutes a day because I'm like, quick decision, intuitive thinker, but I see a lot of friends that are like really, you know, have trouble because, oh, I like both people or I don't like both, but you, you know, we really want you to, you know, force yourself to make that decision because you're actually training the crown algorithm. The more you play every day, the better the recommendations will be. I mean, I personally say it's kind of like Spotify, but a lot of the team doesn't like that reference. But, <laughs> you know, with Spotify, you select, you thumbs up or thumbs down on music and you get better song recommendations. And we're trying to create the same thing in online dating. So that's what we'll see from Crown. The longer it's around and as you hopefully roll out to more cities, we'll see that the the app will take in feedback about the kind of people that you're selecting and then give you more and of those the people kind of that people. are selecting you so if you are ah. winning someone else's crown and uh, and people of a certain uh, age or location or distance from you are are winning your crown then the app's going to suggest better people later on so. now what if you're just like never picked <laughs> what if you're always like, it happened to me for the first few weeks pick. and <laughs> I was like, do I, you know, so you, how you, how is that possible, I, Andrew Lee Miller? Thank you very much. <laughs> but no, I, you know, I always tell friends, you know, I'm definitely not a dating expert, so I'm not trying to steal your crown here. But, <laughs> but uh, I always tell friends, you know, work, you know, work on the product, you know. And, and so for me, the product in the dating app is my pictures and my bio. So you need to iterate on that product. And then so I put better pictures up and a, and a more lengthy profile. And I started winning crowns after that. Hey, how does it feel? It feels great. <laughs> and that's another thing that, you know, the early data that we're seeing and feedback from people is, you know, winning, a, getting a match is cool. But like when you find out you want a crown, you know that you beat out like 10 to 15 other people in that person's peripheral to uh, to get that crown. So you rush to the phone and you want to see who it is. And you're like, yes. And of course, I'll talk with her. And so yeah uh, yeah it's a, really a little bit euphoric. of an ego boost it's a definite ego boost as opposed yeah. to i think sometimes people feel i'm hearing that my clients in the dating app space they feel a little bit beat down sometimes by dating apps because they feel like they're they're not moving anything forward so if you feel like you you did yeah. something by getting a crown you beat out all those other people that might boost your confidence Absolutely. and then you're more successful when you get offline because you feel better about yourself yeah Right. Definitely. So I know that the match group has a lot of different ideas that that they throw in the pipeline. Where, wh why crown, and where did the, this idea generate from? Yeah. So you know we have a lot of data, probably more than anyone else in the dating world out there, and we saw that people are spending tons of time and not getting. Uh, more matches per hour that they're spending in the app. So mm. um, we have an internal idea thon every year at the company, and it's between all 1,500 plus employees. And uh, we actually had a female product manager on the team that had met her husband through Match, but had spent like years struggling with the time investment. And so she came up with the concept, uh, Tricia, and came up with the concept of a limited time investment and you know a little bit of uh, the algorithm and AI helping do the heavy lifting and she actually won the company ideathon and we turned it into a project and maybe spent the last six to eight months building it and uh, now we're going live in LA and it's working and we're really excited yeah this is great well I like I said I had a blast at the party and um, I know you're rolling out in LA right now so mm -hmm. anyone with an iPhone can download the yeah. app from yeah. from the app store yeah, you can just search um, crown on the app store or you can go to crowndating.com find us there 
So I know there's people listening that are elsewhere that are saying, when are we going to get crown? Right. They can tell their friends right now that are in L.A., but is there any plan for the rollout in other cities? Yes, absolutely. So like I said, L.A. is the, the taste-making market for the dating world, and so we're doing really well here. We're definitely ahead of projections on growth already, especially because of the party, you know. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, Saw all those Instagrammers like, hey, yeah, I like I this mean, dating we were, app. <laughs> that was a fun time. And uh, so – Probably in a couple months we'll be rolling out nationwide, but you know it's all dependent on everyone listening, downloading the app, and telling all their friends. Fantastic. Well, I wish you lots of luck on the launch in LA, and I hope you are able to bring it out nationwide, maybe even worldwide, Absolutely. and uh, make dating and dating app use fun again so we can actually get offline and make those connections. Definitely. Less swiping, more fun. That's the goal. All right. Thank get, you. get yourself that Crown Dating app or go to crowndating.com and check it out. Thanks so much. Thank you, Demona. Lovers, you know how serious I am about sexual health. And I've heard all of the condom excuses. But today, I'm going to strip those excuses away when I tell you about Sex by Lola, which has ultra-thin condoms made with medical-grade silicone lubricant. And I'm telling you, friends, this condom is like butter. And if you need even more Glide, Lola also has a water-based, 95% organic personal lubricant right here in a mess-free one-click pump system. Lola is a company that was founded by two women for women to make informed decisions about their bodies. They're known for their line of organic cotton period products, and now they're making intimate products with women in mind, too. And I can tell you from personal experience that the fellas will like the products, too. You want contraception and STI protection without all the side effects of parabens and petrochemicals, GMOs, and other potential irritants getting all up in there. So check out the Sex by Lola line at mylola.com. And for every purchase, Lola do donates feminine care products to homeless shelters across the U.S., so get 40% off your first order with my promo code dates and mates. And don't worry, they will ship your items to you in dis in a discreet box. So just go to mylola.com and don't forget that 40% off promo code dates and mates. I am so excited to introduce my very next special guest to you, Leah Rose Emery. Leah is a writer and comedian based in the UK. She writes on sex, dating, feminism, politics, and addiction for Bustle and elsewhere. And I'm so excited that she's here to share her thoughts about hookup culture, feminism, and dating, and so much more with us today. Please give big smooches to Leah Rose Emery. Hello, hello. Welcome to Dates and Mates. Hi, how are you? I'm so good and I'm so glad that you're here with me because I've been a fan of your writing for a really long time. I well, love how you, for having me. you you really come at it from a feminist perspective and people need this advice that you're giving on Bustle and you're giving them the facts too. But I want to know from your perspective, you say feminism is a great aspect of dating. It's great for dating. Why do you say this, Leah? Well, I mean, I think, first of all, feminism on the most basic level is just the idea that women deserve the same social opportunities, pay and rights as men. I mean, that's what it means. So in a dating sphere, it just means that you're dating someone who also thinks of you as an equal person. So to sure. me, that shouldn't be controversial at all. But I think in a more broad sense, feminism, it empowers women to actually ask for what they want rather than being a bit of a victim in their own dating life and waiting for it to happen to them. It says you don't have to wait. You can actually just go out and get it. I totally agree with you. But for some reason, I feel like you say feminism and people just just get all tense and think that that means anti-men. Exactly. And it doesn't. I mean, that's not that's not what the word means. It is literally just about equality. Um, but for some reason, it gets people up, all curled up. But the way that I look at it is if you're open about being a feminist and you know what that means, you're going to attract other men who are on the same page, which basically just means they're decent people. Right. That also believe in you having an equal an equal stake in the relationship and other aspects of. Uh, and would of you really want to date society. someone who didn't? <laughs> 
I, I mean, I wouldn't, but I'm sure <laughs> there are some women who would. But let's talk about logistically how that plays out, uh, mm-hmm. because now, OK, let's let's go back in time a little bit. Women used to sit around and wait for men to sort of choose them or wait for their parents to make introductions for them. But now we have we have free will. We have choice. We have the ability to meet someone in our neighborhood through an app or across the globe. So when we're talking about feminism and dating, how can we apply that sort of philosophy of women being empowered uh, with the tools and the dating landscape that we have today? Well, I think there are, there are two really important points to that. Firstly, it's take control. So send messages first, you know, actually only swipe right on people that you're interested in rather than just trying to play a numbers game. You know, take the first move, be clear about what you want and reach out to people. Actually, a lot of studies have shown that when women send the first message, it's far more likely to end up as a date and actually turn into something. So send a message suggest actually meeting up in real life and you have a much better shot at your dating life and you won't just feel like you're waiting around for things to happen. The other side of it is, of course, just feeling like you can say no when you want to because I feel like for so long women were not only told to wait around but told that basically a guy was going to choose them and then it was their duty to say yes. You don't have to settle. You can have your deal breakers and you can own those deal breakers. You are completely entitled to have wants and likes and dislikes and you don't need to bend or change. You can wait until someone who actually matches you comes along. And I think that's the other really important part about feminism and dating. Right. But don't you feel like sometimes people take that a little too far and then you end up swiping left on everyone and staying single? Of course, but I think that's, you know, I think that that's an issue with pickiness rather than feminism. <laughs> I think that's, that's someone's personal preference. And you're, you know, you're going to get men and women who just have standards that will never be met. Or, if, you know, I think a lot of times that's people that are afraid to be in a relationship. They know somewhere that maybe they're not ready or they're not in that place. And that's a way of making excuses, isn't it? You know, I, I've certainly done that where I've just been like, oh, I just have all of these things that I need to happen, but actually I just wasn't ready to date. So I think there's a difference between being like, I know that I want someone who is kind and is also going to want children and is going to treat me well and is going to encourage me to be independent and saying, I won't date someone unless they're over six foot six and have red hair, (laughs) which I think puts it in a different category. Yeah. And you have to get a level deeper into what those core values are. And it sounds like you've also put thought into figuring out what the those qualities are in the dream life that you want and the person that you want to build it with. And exactly. I know you write about this a lot and bustle in and other magazines, but I think that's a, that's a really key element of empowering women and dating to know. Yeah. And I think that, you know, being clear about what you want emotionally and in someone's core and who they are as a person is different than being very nitpicky about the fact that they didn't wear shoes that you liked on the first date. Oh yes, please. Let's get over this. The shoes, <laughs> yeah, the musical I, I don't preferences. That at all. There's so many, there's so much minutia that I think we got too caught up in. <laughs> what about when you get to the date, Leia? I'm always asked, well, now that we're more even Should Mm -hmm. the women be offering to pay for the date? Should it be based on who asks whom out? How do you handle that? I think, I mean, I always say go Dutch. If you have the opportunity, going Dutch is always like an easier way. Also, nobody feels beholden to anybody. Nobody feels entitled to anything. It's just all very clear and upfront. I think the only exception to that is if somebody if someone invites you to on an incredibly expensive or extravagant date like that you cannot afford and they go out of their way to plan something, I think that sometimes you can say, all right, this was their idea and this was this would not be a normal thing for me to split. But I think I think splitting, sending the first message afterward, if you had a good time, you know, don't be afraid to message and say that. Don't wait around for someone to message you. There are plenty of ways that once you get to the date, you can keep asserting yourself and that doesn't mean being aggressive it just means being clear and open about what you want and Mm -hmm. even something as simple as paying your half of the bill says I know what I want I'm here because I want to be and I'm you know I'm capable of taking care of myself I'm not looking to be rescued yeah well let's talk about the other side of that because a lot of people feel that now that women are more empowered sexually to make these choices with dating apps the impression 
Leia, is that everybody is running rampant, having sex will just with anyone that's on tinder and just swiping their way into people's beds you write for bustle you see this data firsthand what are you is this true is this happening it's not true i mean it is happening in in the same way that like some people are going to a bar just looking to have sex you know what dating apps are you know and this is from tinder which gets the worst rep to every other dating app the data shows consistently that people on there are looking for relationships in fact most people on there are looking for relationships there's a small portion just looking for sex but there's a small portion of people everywhere just looking for sex so to me that's not a surprising thing and also you know some people do genuinely just want sex and if they want to go for it and own it fine um yeah you know my best friend met her husband on tinder i met my long-term girlfriend on tinder there are plenty of people out there looking for relationships i think that the fact that it what's happened is the fact that we it's a superficial app right you're, you're swiping based off of looks on all of them you're swiping based off of looks so I think that has been misconstrued into a, an idea that it's all just based on looks and carnality and sex, even though what I think that it really is based on is attraction and sure it's superficial, but it doesn't mean people aren't looking for a relationship. Right. But then what is happening to the courtship process? So many people, since since there was that Times article, New York Times article, the death of <laughs> courtship and the rise of hookup culture, everybody is panicking that what what is dating even today like i do hear from millennials that are like oh i don't even know what dating is because we don't do it i think that you know i think that actually what that is and i think there is an issue with this but what that is is a larger problem actually about the way that we talk about sex and we educate people about sex i think that we do a lot of sex education that is completely separate from you know talking about relationships and emotions and respect and safety and all of those things that should go with it so instead we have young people being educated on porn essentially and then they enter their experimental phase and they don't have anything to go off of so a lot of young people I think especially feel like they're a bit lost at sea and that's where that lack of courtship comes from because they actually don't feel like they're educated in this and yes the apps can make it easier for that but I think actually it's more of a college campus culture and uh, the way that we experiment when we're in high school and college that leads to that you know I, I actually didn't start going on dates until I got on online dating because then that's when I actually went on a date with someone rather than just meeting a friend of a friend and hanging out yeah so I was gonna way, say the same thing and I was online dating way before you were and even back then I, I didn't I didn't really know how to date like whenever someone would actually ask me out on a date like face to face legit. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what do I do yeah, now? It feels weird if you don't know it. <laughs> it feels weird. Yeah. Yeah. But then once once online dating really came into the the zeitgeist and everyone was using it, I was like, I'm going out on dates three, four times a week because I have the opportunity and and I think that we have to use those those apps to to practice so that we can get better at, at dating like you said we there's a big there's a big education gap yeah well I'd like to educate people a little bit more you always have such great advice at bustle.com and we have questions that have been submitted to us through our partner app Textpert, where okay. people are getting crowdsourced advice for their drama and we're bringing the best here so I'd love to get your insights on our okay. next segment Technically dating. okay Leah we have a question from a female she is 18 years old she says so we have so much money and my boyfriend's family has like nothing but that doesn't bother me at all but what does bother me is that my mother and dad just give him a lot of stuff and I'm scared that he will later just love the things that he gets through me and not love me for who I am what do you oh think about this one this is this is a unusual situation so like basically parents are trying to buy the affections of the boyfriend it seems yeah to me this sounds way more like a, less of a relationship question more of a parental question <laughs> good point um, i think that that means that you need to talk to your parents and say that you know remind them about the importance of boundaries and say that if this makes 
you uncomfortable. You know, your relationship with your boyfriend should be the primary one, not your parents' relationship with your boyfriend. But, so I think sitting them down and expressing your concerns is really important because they're crossing a huge boundary if that's something you're not okay with. Um, and also if that doesn't work, you know, have a frank conversation with your boyfriend and just say, look, you know, money is hard to talk about, but it's really good to start practicing early because it's going to come up over and over in relationships. So just say, I know we come from different backgrounds. I want to help you, but I, and I'm okay with helping you, but I want to make sure that this doesn't affect our relationship or replace our relationship. Leah Rose Emery, you're so wise. That is such a good answer. And it clearly is an issue with her parents feeling maybe insecure about the fact that they have this money. And yeah, maybe guilt or you know it could be genuine but it's still crossing a line yeah yeah and also like the feeling that they they have to step in is is something that as this relationship progresses is probably going to continue to come up like if they end up getting married and having children her parents are going to feel like they always need to step in and save the day and yeah, I it's think it's very slow. Yeah, it's really important to set that boundary now before things get more complicated and it will get more complicated. <laughs> uh, I have another question. OK, this is a fun one. This is a very bustle ass question. Um, this one is a female. She's 30 years old. She lives in Texas and she would like some tips on having some nookie at work, obviously without getting caught. LOL. <laughs> so how can she get busy at work here in Texas? <laughs> oh my God. First step, like don't get caught, obviously. Um, also, where do you work? Because I feel like that, that makes a big difference. I mean, I know people who have gotten down in their offices. I would say don't wait until everyone leaves and do it in the boss's office because my friends did that and that's how they got fired. Oh um, so my, that is so bold. <laughs> true story. The poor janitor who found them was traumatized. Um, so I think, it, you know, stick to private and discreet places, first of all, um, and, and pick your timing when you know that either people who will notice you're gone, your line manager, you know, wait until a lunch break or a meeting when places are quiet. Um, I, I'm guessing that your best bet is going to be a handicapped bathroom stall because that's probably going to offer the most privacy and space. But I have to say, I don't think there's any way you're going to make this romantic. I think you're just going to have to be doing it for the thrill of it because that's all you're going to get out of an office hookup. Right. I I have a friend who had an interesting workplace. She was a flight attendant. And I asked her, is this Mile High Club really a thing? And she said, it's definitely a thing, but everyone assumes it's happening in the lavatory, in the bathroom. And she said, actually, it's the blankets. They're having sex under the blankets, which she said she did with her ex-husband uh, when they oh were God. they both were working for the airline. And I'm like, that seems so exposed. It's so naughty. <laughs> I saw some statistics about that, actually. And I was amazed at how many people were doing it there or in like the back open area where surely someone's going to notice. Surely. But oh I, I guess Those it's like international you know, flights. You. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful, people. I just... I just have to ask if it's really that important to have sex at work. Like, you really, you must have sex at work. The thrill is that, that yeah, provocative. I'm all about new and wild sexual experiences, but that seems like one that, like, maybe put a little thought into that. Let, let's think that through to its natural conclusion. Also, yes. do you have a partner that you're, like, sneaking into the office? Do they have a guest pass for, <laughs> for some afternoon nookie? Like, how's that going to work? It's too complicated with the surveillance video and yeah, guest pass. It's just too complicated. I say skip it. Uh, here's another question. This comes to us from a female who's 34. She lives in Illinois. She says, I've been talking to this guy for two months and we've talked about hanging out. And yesterday he asked to hang out because he was passing by my house. He lives over an hour away. And I didn't want to seem desperate, but I said, well, how about in a couple of hours? And then he said he forgot he had to take care of his dog. So he said, like, let's definitely hang out another day. Did I come off too needy or maybe is th is that what changed his mind? So no. <laughs> what's up? What's up with this? Is this a booty call situation? No, I don't think it's a booty call. Well, maybe it's a booty call. I would <laughs> say it's a pen pal situation. Those people who just talk to you for months and months and months and then never meet up. And often those are peppered with little things like this where like, oh, we almost met up, but we just missed each other. Damn it. But actually they were never planning on doing it. So I think, I mean, he was the one who asked to stop by. You saying in a couple of hours isn't too needy. He was the one who randomly suggested to stop by. I think yeah. if you've been 
talking for two months, an hour away, over an hour away is just a half an hour each. Why haven't you met up yet? Uh, exactly. You hit the nail on the head. And also, I would say she went with the less needy route of saying, oh, in a couple hours, like if she had said, oh, I'm available. Yes. Come over right now. To me, that sounds like she's really needing the attention and has nothing else going on in her life. Yeah, I, I think that actually what she's doing, and a lot of us do this, so so no offense to this questioner, because I have done it too, is taking the blame on yourself for a situation where I think the other person is not great, but maybe not willing to admit yet that this isn't working or that you're probably not going to meet up with this person or that it might just fade out. So you're trying to think that you did something wrong to sort of keep it alive. But I do not think this is on you. This is why people are not having more sex, <laughs> as it turns out. <laughs> exactly. All right, Leah Rose Embry, I have one more question for you. This comes to us from a female. She's 18. She asks, well, she says, I don't know if I'm bi or not. I'm really confused in the mo at the moment. I go to an all-girls school, so there are no boys here, but I have just started really liking a girl. I don't know if it's just because there are no boys around or because I genuinely like girls too, but I only tend to like the girls that I know are bi or lesbian. Mm. Hmm. I think that, I mean, this is a really common issue, isn't it? They have the, the gay until grad, whether you're at an all girls high school or an all girls college, the <laughs> gay until grad situation. Um, I'm bisexual and I didn't know that I was bisexual right away. What I would say is like, don't really sweat it. If, if you're, there's plenty of time to explore. You can, you know, if, if you know this girl is bisexual or lesbian, you can approach her and maybe try to initiate something, but you don't have to beat yourself up if it goes one way or another and you're allowed to not be sure and allowed to tell potential partners that you're not sure. The other thing I would say is, bi doesn't have to be that you're always attracted to women or that you're always attracted to men or that it's a 50-50 split. You can be bisexual and be usually attracted to men, but occasionally attracted to women or vice versa. Sometimes people find that they go through certain periods where they're more attracted to men or women. So don't feel like you have to check a certain box to call yourself bisexual. You know what you feel and what you're attracted to. And if that label feels right for you, then that's the right label to use. But give yourself some time, experiment, and give yourself a break while you figure it out. What do you think about the part where she said she's only attracted to women who she knows are bisexual or lesbian? That's really common. And I think it's, I think it's honestly a, an, almost an unconscious layer of self-protection. You know, I think that you all often... if. if you'll feel like you're going to make yourself vulnerable if you come on to a straight girl. So your brain doesn't even let you consider that possibility. And the fact that someone you know is interested in women is going to naturally peak something in your brain that's already lingering there. So if you have any kind of thoughts or feelings or attractions, hearing that someone else is interested in that is naturally going to peak it. So I wouldn't overthink that too much. Great, great advice. Well, I love your work at bustle.com. You have, you have so many articles out there. Uh, you're like one of the most prolific writers there at that magazine and at so many other magazines. Do you have a favorite article that you've worked on recently that that our listeners just have to check out? <laughs> um, well, I think actually it's it's Pride. It, so I think that's important. We're just at the very end of Pride Month and there's a lot of great articles going around Pride. But I wrote one last year that's still really re relevant about why we need Pride so much right now um, in the current climate. So if you want to if you feel like being an ally and you're not really sure how, check that out because there's a lot of really important information in there. Not just if you feel like being an ally. If you need yeah. to get educated and you need to open your heart and be compassionate, even if that is not how you are choosing to use your to to live your life, or if you just need to to if you just want to understand it from. Yeah, I remember that article you and know, yeah, you we need to educate yourself. It's very important. So thank you for doing the work that you do and for continuing to spread the love at Bustle. And um, I know you're on social media and there's so much more from you there at Leia Rose Emery, and that's on all the socials, right? On uh, Instagram yes, exactly. and Twitter at. Uh, I'll just spell it for you all. L-E-A-R-O-S-E-E-M-E-R-Y. Thank you so much, Leah. I really appreciate you being here and keep up the great well, work at so Bustle. Thank you so much. <laughs> and Bye. Thank
Thank you. And thank you to our friends from the Match Group and Andrew Lee Miller from Crown Dating App for being here. If you're in L.A., go ahead and download that Crown Dating App and start to get your game on and see if you win some crowns today. Also, thank you to our sponsor, Care Of, where you can get 25% off your first vitamin box. Take the quiz and get started today at TakeCareOf.com using the promo code DATESANDMATES. And Lola, which has your feminine and safe sex needs covered at mylola.com. Again, it's mylola.com and use the offer code dates and mates for 40% off. And a uh, little a little bit of bittersweet news. We are going to be taking a little hiatus. I haven't taken one literally in years. Yeah. <laughs> I've taken one hiatus in the five and a half years I've been doing the show. So we're just going to be off for a month. But some of the older shows are going to be coming down. So uh, make sure that you get caught up and you check out all of the older episodes of Dates and Mates before they disappear into the vault forever. You can tell a friend so they can binge listen and be ready for Dates and Mates when we come back in August. In the meantime, you can stay in touch with me on social media and send me any questions that come up this month at Demona Hoffman on IG, Twitter, and Facebook. I will see you in August, but until then, I wish you happy dating.